Hi everybody, I'm Jordan Rolfus from Beagle Rampant Productions. And I'm Selena Rolfus. And we are continuing our Let's Play of Pool of Radiance. In the previous episode, you saw us liberate the Nomad Camp. And I made promises of some live streaming so we can go ahead and grind. I broke those promises because I'm too stupid to get my capture card to work Aww. with streaming software. So I went ahead and did some off-camera grinding. By and large, you guys didn't really, I mean, you didn't really miss much of anything at all. We liberated Podol Plaza off-camera, but we will collect the council reward uh, right now when I hit uh, continue game. And we also experienced the Fae Spiders, and actually Squeak Doo was working uh, like how adults do and making good money while I was sitting here um, playing some Pool of Radiance to grind up. Um, oh, but you're working hard Saturdays and Sundays while I'm chillaxing. I mean, I'm not working hard, but, you know, y you know, guys, you get paid the same whether you work hard or do nothing. That's really? my career advice. I guess unless you're on commission. Unless you're on commission, then, yeah, it needs to be go-go. Oh, my God, I would starve. I literally <laughs> could never sell anyone yeah. on anything. Yeah, squeak dudes maybe not the most um, high-pressure people there, but... um. I'd be like, do you want to buy this thing? No. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much how that would be, but, um, yeah, we ran, I ran into the, um, Fae Spiders today. The Fae Sp I actually ran into the Fae Spiders twice, um, and I'm, uh, probably showing some of these Fae Spider battles right now, but by and large, the Fae Spider is among the rarest enemies in the game. There was even a rumor going around back when the game was first released that... They just put it in the instruction manual, but they didn't actually have it in the game because the occurrence rate is so rare. They are extremely difficult villains. They have a very low armor class. I think they take 35 hit points, and they can do poison damage, which, as you know, in this game, poison damage is much more severe yeah. than it is in Final Fantasy. It pretty much is an insta-kill. And uh, the phase spiders have a annoying habit of phasing out. You can hit them a little bit, and they'll just phase out, and you don't get any experience points if they phase out. So, the phase spiders, definitely a tricky battle, but I'm proud to say that in both instances today, we had some pretty decent luck with the random number generator. Our magic users were able to successfully cast Stink Cloud and nauseate them to a held position, and Rose was able to do some nice slicing and chopping there, and the second battle was maybe a little bit tougher than the first one, but we got it together, and you win about 3,000 experience points from nice. a battle with the Face Spider. But of course, that 3,000 gets divided up among your party, and then uh, we have a lot of multi-class party members, so then that gets divided so up even further. So can we, like, change jobs mid-game? Nope. So we can't just dump their thief abilities now that we completed the mansion. <laughs> yeah, no. And, I mean, the thief ability has advantages, too. So, um, yeah, it's not like I, it was a total waste making Nightshade and Craven thieves, but, yeah, Fae Spiders. We had some uh, good luck with the Fae Spiders, and hopefully we're going to have some good luck with the random number generator tonight, because we're going to try moving on over to the Buccaneer base. Now let me press this continue game button here, and wait, where am I? Okay, we're going to go ahead and claim our reward for liberating Podo Plaza. Doo doo, doo 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 doo. You open the east door. Oh, it's almost nighttime. We'll have to rest in the slums. Let me check whether we owe you a reward. I hear you annihilated the monsters of Total Plaza. We sure did. And again, guys, you've seen all of those monsters before throughout this Let's Play. And so it's and it was just go do about 20 random encounters. So you did not miss anything story related at all off camera. Take your reward. Oh, look at that. Now I'll give you your commission. 
tell you about Valhingen Graveyard. Be careful. The undead of the graveyard have become very dangerous for Flan. If you take up the mission to destroy the undead, I'll give you a magic weapon. Not yet. We, we're getting close-ish to accepting that. Find what contaminates the Stolyamal River and end it. A tribe of lizardmen is preparing to join the enemy. Prevent this. How you guys like the new administration? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Last episode, uh, the inauguration had not even happened, and now we got our brand new lizards installed, and the other, the lizards for the other team are like, well, how do we go and get rid of these lizards in the next lizard race? Also known as election. We call <laughs> uh, elections lizard races. Oh, lizard men. The only son of Bivant was kidnapped. Find him and rescue. He was the only son? The only son. Yeah, the only uh, Bivant heir. Oh, so Bivant is a family. Mm hmm. He bears a heart shaped mark on his shoulder. I have given all the missions that I may. See, when I first read that, I thought the haunt was a town, and I'm like, they only had one boy? Is this like the Gerudos? <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is, um... Yeah, he's, uh, Bivant's, uh, councilman. I don't know if we meet him. And, uh... So, training. We did a little bit of off-camera training. Rose, um, doesn't have enough experience. Rose is now a six-level fighter. You may have noticed, oh, wow, her hit points are looking a little goosed up there. And Splinter, now this is worrying me, we leveled up Splinter to a fifth level cleric. And now we're in training mode, I want to train him in uh, the art of being a cleric. You can progress no farther, I can train you no more. I'm worried. Um, I'm wondering if I maybe should have had a human cleric that could level up all the way. I'm getting worried, guys. All the races can't level up all the way? Only humans can level up all the way. Why? Or no, I think... Okay, if you are a split class, you can't level up all the way. And a human cannot be a split class. A human can only be one thing. I know lots of humans who are many things. <laughs> yep. I'm a human who's many things. Yes, we do is a sister, a daughter, an employee, a citizen of Hamilton County. The uh, president representative of Spookane. Yes, our um, uh, island in Animal Crossing <laughs> is called Spookane, so she is the resident representative. I declare myself emperor, so <laughs> ironically she ends up having more power. Uh, so now, Splinter, you might be able to become a magic user at 5 level. Okay, Splinter can be a magic user at 5 level. Let's train him. And now we can get the 3 level spells, and we are going to get Fireball. The most... Ugh. Only 2 hit points. Your training is finished. Does anybody else want to be trained? I, I give this guy a funnier voice, don't I? Hey, yeah, the, the tough guy. All right. I bet he loved the Super Bowl this weekend. You know, it's funny. The Buccaneers uh, won the Super Bowl this weekend, and we're actually getting ready to do the Buccaneer base in this episode. Oh. Hopefully the Buccaneers don't win this. So they, they should just take the Super Bowl and be happy with that. Okay, so I hope Splinter is not maxed out now. You don't have enough experience. Cool. So Splinter can go further. I believe Pumpkin, and Pumpkin as well. She is a five-level cleric, and you can progress no farther. I can train you no more. That's kind of sad, isn't it? It's almost like graduation a little bit. Like, oh, Pumpkin, you completed your study, and you graduated. Aww. See, in Fire Emblem, like, if you, um... If you complete your job, you can move on to a more advanced job. Yeah, but, like, is there a difference between job or class, though? 
Like, this is a really, like, class. Like, like job and class are the same thing. Like, mage uh, yeah, okay. is one class. Like, paladin. Okay. Wyvern rider. The Wyvern Riders can have fun sitting on the sidelines of my party. <laughs> there we go. They're just too much of a liability. <laughs> yeah. Plus, in Fire Emblem Awakening, that one Wyvern girl was after my man, Krom. Mmm. Yeah, see, Fire Emblem has, like, dating stuff. You, you don't have to worry about dating stuff in Pool of Radiance, though. Well, I mean, we all know who's dating who. Yep, um, uh, Splinter and Pumpkin kind of want a thing, but Craven also wants Pumpkin. Rose is 18 now. We hasten Rose. Um, she's 18 years of age now, so um, uh, you feel free to begin composing your PP fanfics. Uh, How cool would that be if someone wrote a fanfic about our um, Pool of Radiance Pool of Radiance. LP? Dude, I am still waiting for um, some Norse the Grey fanfic. Oh, and shout out. Um, shout out to YouTube watcher Mr. Chad Bailey. Um, thank you so much for watching the first few episodes and for commenting and interacting. I hope you're still invested to this point here. Um, it, it was a pleasure hearing from you, man, and sharing some of your memories and stuff in the comments, so I hope you're enjoying this, and thank you for watching. I salute you, my friend. But Pumpkin can be a magic user at five levels, so you know what we're gonna give her. Fireball. Alrighty. And anybody else want to be trained? I don't know if anyone else can be trained. Yeah, Nightshade doesn't... can't be, uh... Next level fighter. Dude, this episode is 12 minutes already. Oh, wait, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Put the wrong thing. Don't have enough experience, don't have enough experience. And which class will you train? You could be a fighter at 5 level. Tyron Thraxus is going to slaughter us. Guys, I hope you don't think like, Oh my god, he gave away a spoiler. Like, you probably figured we were going to fight Tyron Thraxus at some point. Like, you know. Don't have enough experience, you're still too green. Yeah, alright, you guys ain't got none. Alrighty. So we're gonna rest up in the slums like the classy uh, peeps we are. So how are you beagle pups doing this week? Um, you enjoying your lizards? Your new lizards? <laughs> you uh, sad about your old lizards? <laughs> ah, lizard jokes. Splinter has been very good during a lot of the, um, uh, grinding sessions, um, I've been kind of enjoying that. Um, oh yeah, so uh, Pumpkin and Splinter are now five-level clerics, so they can learn the level three spells. Sounds confusing? If I would have just made them a cleric, just a cleric? I think by the time they got to level 3, they would have been able to learn the level 3 spells. But since it's a divided class, it takes them a little bit longer. Um, they have too many tabs open in their brain. They do, yes. Yeah, too many tabs in the brain. This spell, Meditation, in the PC version, it was actually called Prayer. But it's a Nintendo in their um, reluctance to do, to do overt religious references, changed it to meditation, and... But wait, I, in Earthbound, they let um, Paula pray. Uh, yeah, they you let... Uh, yeah, so... I guess they calmed down Calmed a down a little bit from that, and I think it's kind of a thing, like, it's not like Nintendo is, oh, they just hate religion. No, I don't think it's like that. I think it's more like they don't want to come off as disrespectful because some faiths might be like whoa, whoa, whoa you are you can't just be tossing around prayer all the really Also, like, in this time, like I mean, video games are getting more respect, but back when these games were made, like, video games were still a very 
burgeoning media, you know, right. like yeah. people just kind of thought of them as like the silly Donkey Kong or Pac-Man that you played at the pizza place. Right. So like uh, doing prayer on something as frivolous as a video game, it, it didn't really. Yeah. So Nintendo thought it best, but the actual spell meditation, the jury's out if it actually does anything. The level 3 cleric spells are god-awful. They, they, all of them suck. Um, meditation is supposed to give your party a Thacko bonus, Thacko to hit armor class 0, and they are to give the enemy an armor class penalty. That's what it's supposed to do on paper. I don't think it does that. Oh yes, I need to learn the fireball. Now I remember, like when we would, when you tried to teach me how to play Dungeons and Dragons IRL, like mm -hmm. you would have different dice that you would use for different things. Yes. Maybe is the dice for meditation really crappy? I no. I think it's just uh, they. It didn't get programmed all that good. I love all their fun dice, like, especially mm. the 20-sided die. Oh, that's a good one. The 30-sided die is real nice as well, but, um... It's like I like all of the, like, set dressing and accessories of Dungeons & Dragons, but, like, to actually sit and play it... Just, <laughs> no. I just want to look at funny dice and pictures of monsters. But, like... I'm a, I'm a fabulous DM, guys, and you know if, if I'm your DM, you're gonna run into that uh, trope that we saw in the slums of the loose floorboard. You were very patient when teaching me. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I do what I can. Guys, I don't actually remember where on earth this th place is. Oh, we meet thieves. I thought thieves were supposed to be hot. Yeah, not these guys. Dude. Dude. Bunch of first level thieves. Rose, if you would be so kind as to dispatch them. I don't remember where this actual place is, and ironically, we'll, I'll want to rest up before we go in, because I always mess this mission up. Uh, you, there's a way to do it real stealthily and not really have to fight anybody. I screw that up almost every single time. Stealth is not your friend. No, I am horrible at stealth. So cyberpunk is a very irksome experience for me. I mean, I know people love it, but it's just... I need to... Yeah. There's a part of me that wants to love it, like, but... I don't know. Me and Cyberpunk, we're not bonding. Nice! Go get him, Pumpkin. <laughs> to be fair, we did start this fight. Selene, she killed him, and all for just a pitiful, yeah. But yeah, you gotta be like in full vigor to uh, take on the Buccaneer base. I always think you're gonna say Buccaneer babes, and I'm picturing sexy pirate, pirate girls. girls. Oh. oh! I love them! Talk to them! It's a giant snake, so it attacks suddenly. Harry Potter could have done it. <laughs> he sure could have. Ain't it funny, when I'm grinding, it takes forever for a random encounter to happen. When we're recording and it's like, okay, I kind of want to show everybody some action here. Um, <laughs> it's fight after fight. No, oh, the snake is nauseous. He's not as nauseous as he should be. There we go. And yes, giant snakes, they take 25 hit points there. Oh god. You know, it's kind of funny, like, because I imagine we're kind of close to the mid or end of the game. 
Like, but the numbers just seem really low. It's kind of like the opposite of Final Fantasy. It really is. Where, like, you have hundreds and hundreds of hit points, and, like, the basic attack would do, like, 100 to 150 on the low end. Right. Like... I feel like those numbers are hard to believe in a highway, but these are kind of hard to believe in a, in a in the way. other way. Alright guys, a merchant with slaves is entering the Buccaneer base. We're ready to go here. You get to the Buccaneer base. A Buccaneer offers to lead you into the base. Let's go. You enter the Buccaneer's base. The Buccaneers take you to the market square. Slave traders are pitching tents. God. Yep, this is the slave trade. Need to nip this in the bud. The merchants are camping here. The slaves are pinned like animals. You see a boy who has a birthmark on his left shoulder. Hey, that's the boy! Then a fat slave trader comes over. Uh, that boy will bring a good price in genteel keep. Uh, I had my eye on him earlier. You guys remember we sat in the tavern and they said, genteel keep is kind of like a sovereign nation. They might declare war on Flan. And do you also remember in the last episode, Chief Hassad saying, bad men are in the castle to the southwest? That's what he's referring to. Oh. Um, we need to hit him. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to try to do this stealthily. But what about the kid? We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get him we're gonna get him. You keep silence and ignore the repulsive slave trader when he says, uh, "Look for other slaves." Saying that, the trader walks away. I don't think it matters too much what answer you give there. Um, hitting the slave trader will go ahead and, like, start battles, I think. These are the guard towers. There are four guards. You shouldn't be here! Get out! Okay. Okay. We're gonna try to do this. There's a way I can do this, and... I screw this up every time, guys. A shabby man appears and asks, Uh, you wanna buy a pass to see the captain? Nah, I'm good. The man turns the corner and disappears. Oh. Dude, there was an area map here. The merchants are camping here. I'm glad that there is an area map. Why would here. we want to pass to see the captain? <laughs> so we can buy the Bevont air and then bring him back to Bevont. Cows and horses are pinned here. Okay. The buccaneers gather. You shouldn't be here! Get out! Okay. Cows and horses are pinned here. Okay. There's a way to do this. Cows and horses are pinned here. You could open the door latch very easily. What do you do? Okay, we're gonna open the latch. The animals bolt from the pins and scatter far and ride. The buccaneers begin to chase them wildly. Okay, now... Oh god, where, where are you, Bebop there? The animals are running around the base. Yes, they are. God bless them. Okay. The animals are running around the base. Good. Here's the door of the slave pen. There are no guards. Okay. There's a boy with a burk mark on his left shoulder. You take the child out. A group of other slaves begins to run away. Yes, to freedom. Yep, to freedom. The animals are running around the base. The animals are running around the base. You are near the gate to the buccaneer's base. You don't see any guards around here. And we did it. Okay. Wow, no battles. I always screw that up. Uh, except this time. Thankfully, this time, I did not screw Although that up. Although I would have liked to have seen them get their comeuppance. So, the boss of the Buccaneer base has more hit points than Tyrann Thrachos. He's less resistant to, like, magic. Like, Tyrann Thrachos is uh, resistant to pretty much everything. But, um, 
yeah, it is n that battle, those battles in the Buccaneer base are no joke. Ironically, though, actual Buccaneers are kind of easy to take down, but, like, there are a ton of other guards and fighters. It's... But we freed the slaves, and we didn't have to get messy with the fireballs here, so we're gonna go ahead and claim ourselves a big, juicy reward! Is the council lady gonna see that he gets home safely? I think uh, Mr. Bivant is ready right now. Let me check whether we owe you a reward. Lord Bivant is very glad that you helped his child. He left a reward for you with the council. Take your reward. Oh, yeah. Who wants the opal pendant? Nightshade, grab yourself the opal pendant. Can we put it on her? Yeah, totally. Yeah, let's put it on her, and then Rose will have her diamond necklace soon. Soon, yep. Yeah. Now I'll give you your commission. I've already read this, this episode. Yes. Sexy vampires, they're dangerous. Yes. Yeah. And that makes them even sexier. Stolen out river. Lizard men. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and here comes the new mission. Counselor Cadorna wants you. Mm -hmm. Wow, news of Rose turning 18 really does spread. <laughs> yep. He will give you an important diplomatic mission. Go through the south door. I have given all the missions that I may. Bring this letter to Gentile Keep in the West. Do not read it beforehand. Can you read it beforehand? I don't think you can. I'll escort you to the exit. Well, thank you, sir. Alright, guys, so isn't it interesting? So, and like, anyone who's kind of, like, thinking about this may totally see from six miles away where this is going, but when we were in the wealthy district, and, um, they were talking about, um, the monsters were riding, when we get to Flam, slay everyone except Kadorna. And isn't it interesting that Kadorna has a nice diplomatic letter for the sovereign nation that seems to want to declare war on Flan and buy slaves from the Buccaneers? Isn't this interesting? Yeah. Mm. Something stinks. Something stinks. But we're going to have to find out about all that stinkiness in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. You know you're the best fans of any YouTuber on the planet, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you with some other fun things at Genteel Keep. Bye!